ES Audio. What's up? I'm John Weeks. This is the Evening Standard Tech and Science Daily. Let's go. Coming up, why Meta and Microsoft are now working together. But first, NASA has said it is a defender of the planet after its mission to divert the course of a faraway asteroid was successful. The team has confirmed that the spacecraft's impact altered the amorphous orbit around Didymos by 32 minutes and therefore successfully moved its trajectory. That's NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. It sounds like something out of a Hollywood movie, and it is the first time humans have ever attempted to alter the trajectory of a celestial object. NASA's fridge-sized spacecraft spent 10 months traveling 7 million miles to the asteroid, called Dimorphos, before crashing into it at 14,000 miles an hour, changing its course. This is a watershed moment for planetary defense and a watershed moment for humanity. And that's why it was fitting that DART was an international endeavor. The US Space Agency said the mission was designed to test whether the technique could be used in future deflect asteroids that threaten to crash into Earth. Endurance swimmer Lewis Pugh has begun his mammoth challenge to swim his way across the Red Sea to highlight the impact of climate change on coral reefs. This is the defining issue of our generation. I'm asking world leaders to show courage. I'm asking them to be bold with respect to the climate action. And I strongly believe that I can't ask other people to do things unless I'm courageous myself. It's the first time anyone's attempted to swim across the 100-mile stretch of water between Saudi Arabia and Egypt, where world leaders will gather next month for COP27. Lewis spoke to Tech and Science Daily when he completed swimming challenges in the cold waters of the Arctic and Antarctic, but said this time he faces very different conditions. Water can get up to 31 degrees centigrade, and the air temperature can be well above 40 degrees centigrade, and so that's incredibly hot. I risk heat stroke and dehydration, which could severely damage my muscles and even my brain. Lewis told us why he's raising awareness of the impact warming temperatures are having on coral reefs in particular. Coral reefs are the nurseries of our oceans, and even though they cover less than 1% of the ocean, they support 25% of its biodiversity. And this means that they are vital life support systems for marine life. On the top of that, millions of people all over the world depend on coral reefs. Now, Meta and Microsoft appear to have teamed up to bring more things to the metaverse. The pair are working on bringing Teams, Office, Windows and even Xbox Cloud Gaming to Quest VR headsets. Microsoft said they want to offer a more immersive meeting experience to Quest users with the ability to stream Excel, Word and PowerPoint documents within the virtual meetings. As for the Xbox side of things, it won't mean games are fully VRified. Instead, you'll be able to play games the normal way with an Xbox controller using a giant screen projected inside a VR headset. A rocket delivering satellites into orbit is set to be launched from the UK using a modified jumbo jet. A former Virgin Atlantic Boeing 747 will take off from a spaceport in Cornwall, sending the rocket up to an altitude of 35,000 feet over the Atlantic Ocean. At that point, the Launcher 1 rocket itself will accelerate to 8,000 miles per hour and deploy seven satellites into orbit. It's launching a range of different satellites, including one designed to monitor illegal fishing, smuggling, trafficking, piracy, and terrorism. And if you want to see a copy of the rocket, you can spot it in London this weekend. Now, The domestic abuse charity Refuge is calling on the government to ensure the online safety bill will protect women from online abuse. More than one in three UK women have experienced online abuse or harassment on social media or elsewhere online, according to their research. The charity wants a violence against women and girls code of practice to be included within the bill. It's calling for more regulation so social media companies act when abusive or harmful content is posted on their platforms. Coming up, how Amazon Candle reviews we used to track COVID cases. Why not hit follow and give us a rating during the break? Welcome back. 
For the first time, researchers in Sweden have managed to show how the dreaded polio virus behaves when it takes over a cell using an advanced cryo-electron microscope. They've been able to take 3D images of how the virus forms and takes over human cells. They say the virus transforms processes in the cell that are otherwise used to destroy viruses to produce new viruses instead. Due to successful global vaccination campaigns, polio disease is considered virtually eliminated, but the virus was detected in sewage in New York and London earlier this year. The only way to prevent the disease is to be vaccinated. And finally, experts in the US claim to have found a new way of recognising surges of COVID, and it involves analysing online reviews of candles. Researchers at Northeastern University in Boston claim that reviews of Yankee candles in particular on sites like Amazon can help predict the beginning of COVID waves. They noticed a flurry of reviews claiming the typically super strong smelling candles had no scent whatsoever, suggesting those reviewers had the now well-known COVID symptom a loss of their sense of smell. It led to a whole paper on using the reviews to detect COVID surges, and it's thought the technique of using online clues could be more effective than others for collecting data more generally. You are up to date. Come back at 4pm for The Leader Podcast, where we bring you the latest news and analysis from the Evening Standard in London. We are back tomorrow afternoon at one. See you then. 